Hi, I'm Vince Molinari, and welcome to FinTech TV. We're broadcasting from the iconic New York Stock Exchange, and I'd like to welcome a special guest, Sabina Moschini, who is the CEO of Unicorn Hunters and the founder of Unicorn. Selbina is an award-winning serial entrepreneur, international speaker, and author. Selbina has also established herself as one of the foremost experts on the digital asset economy, women economic empowerment, and democratization of investment opportunities across the world. Selbina, so good to have you here with us at the New York Stock Exchange today. I am today. thrilled to be here, Vince, and, and as I tell you, my first time at the Stock Exchange is well, exciting. It makes it extra special. <laughs> There's nothing like coming to the New York Stock Exchange, the history from 1792. It is absolutely iconic. Never gets old for us, but to have somebody coming for the first time, it's such great pleasure to extend that to you today. And a woman, the little girl in me, was absolutely, absolutely thrilled to be here when I saw the other little girl at the entrance. So as a woman entrepreneur, it's just so important and thrilled to be here with you. Well, actually, it's a great way to start off, right? You, you do so much around the world for women empowerment, gender equality, financial inclusion. We have the fearless girl mm -hmm. out store, outside the exchange. So how fitting to start off that way. Tell me why it's so important for you to bring women globally into new economic opportunities, to have level pay. Share with me why that's so motivating for you. Well, as a start, women are humans, and as humans, we deserve the same opportunities that men have, but sadly, we didn't have the same opportunities for many years, and I understood from someone that was extremely special for me, my dad, that when I was a little girl, he told me that I could be a princess, but if I wanted to be a princess, I needed to be one that built her own castles, because true independence always starts with financial independence. And I think that being here today, having the opportunity to talk to you about women, about power, about money, it just shows how we are moving from the narrative into actually getting things done, getting women comfortable talking and making money and embracing the opportunities that the ability to create companies and be naturally uh, embracing their financial future can bring. Well, I, I love the great words of wisdom from your dad to build your own castle. As you continue to build your own castle and, and many castles and help others uh, build their castles, what's, what's the best message that you can give to women who need to know how about go about this? What, what's their first steps? I think that the most important thing is to see if inside your heart you have it to, to become an entrepreneur because this is a very, very tough journey. It's a miraculous journey in which like you have to reinvent yourself a hundred times and you have to develop thick skin because a lot of the things will go wrong. A lot of people will tell you many times that you don't have what it takes, that you can just stay at home and just be there. So what I can tell them is if you have it inside, build big, big company that has big impact. Use the opportunity that the crisis brings to entrepreneurs in general, to women entrepreneurs. Give them the opportunity to build with little money, to leverage from the on-demand economy, to leverage from the fact that today even with just a small budget and a camera, you can create content, you can connect to the world. And also just seeing that the biggest limitations that we always have are those that live in our heads, that there are no differences that should be separating a person, men or women, from, from their dreams and becoming an entrepreneur, they can create wealth, they can create impact, they can solve real world problems and it's as challenging as it's magic. Well, what a great and perfectly timed message. Uh, Sabina, let, let's talk a little bit about the extension of that when we talk about democratizing access to capital and what that really means and how powerful and what that means to you and your platform. Access to capital, that's you know one of the, the things that keep me up at night because as a woman entrepreneur I, I went through that. 2% only of the BC capital goes to female-led companies and diverse founders. Diverse founders also have it uh, extremely challenging to, to get the capital. So for us what it means is to connecting the talent with the opportunities and solving the issue not only for the entrepreneur but also for those persons that are in the audience that want to invest in these companies. And we did it by creating a show 
a show called a show called Unicorn Hunters that connect the dots between the entrepreneurs that are presenting and pitching their companies to those people that can actually provide the funding and invest in them to make it happen. And in this road, of course, uh, we encounter founders from all over the world, from all different walks of life, from different nations that have great companies and just need to have the backers that make their companies happen financially. And then the rest is history. Well, it's so amazing with Unicorn Hunters. And when we look at that, and kind of a, an outcropping of the Jobs Act and how messaging and awareness, right? There's so many great entrepreneurs business ideas that never get heard because they don't have the access. So by bringing that visibility and awareness, they're letting their voices and their ideas be heard. Absolutely. They make them visible and it makes it transparent. And for us, transparency and accountability, it's a pillar. And we are basically connecting the dots. There are thousands of hubs that accelerate entrepreneurs in remote places from Chile to Doha. Uh, what we are building here is it's a network, it's a platform that will work with innovators and for, with those that are connecting these innovators, bring them together and create a funnel so we connect entrepreneurs with access to capital, with access to talent globally and with access to market opportunities. And we do this by leveraging the Jobs Act, as you said, allowing them to advertise and sell part of the companies to, to the general audience in a show in which we just present the talent to the world and let the people do their magic. Well, you know, speaking of magic, and I want to pull on that a little bit, this magic almost of universal nature, right? All of these conversations, the opportunities are truly global when you talk about Doha to back to the United States to Mumbai, right? Thematically, it's the same messaging where you never know where the next best idea or the next entrepreneur is sitting with the, the, the revolutionary company. So bringing that visibility is really extraordinary. Yes, Vince, and one of the beautiful things that happened in the show, and you know, when we started, we started in the pandemic. We were out there at the CBS television city in LA with a dream team. We have executive producers that were building the mass singer, the apprentice, deal no deal. And we were sitting there as entrepreneurs saying like, hey, we raise money for ourselves using the Jobs Act. Uh, what about if we take this to the next level and we build a platform that will allow other entrepreneurs to do the same? And we found out that it was doable. We got the likes of uh, Steve Wozniak, the emblematic founder of, of Apple, Rossi Rios, the treasurer of the former treasurer of the United States, uh, Lance Bass from NSYNC, probably you remember from no, that sure, old time. Of we all dance here. <laughs> you don't want to see me dancing. That's no. not a good. <laughs> well, I pass on that job. I'm Argentinian. We are not like that good at dancing like other Latin Americans. But it was an amazing opportunity to meet founders from India, from the UK, from Denmark, from Mexico, from Chile, and connecting them through the show, not only with people who became their investors, but also people who said, I want to represent your company. I want to take your company to my market. I want to help you to grow because suddenly this crowd financing allows many people to have a skin on the game on the success of these entrepreneurs. So it's not only about the money. Money, of course, can do a lot of things, but cannot <laughs> buy you happiness <laughs> or necessarily complete success but it enables you to connect with the people that can help you to open the doors, to have their endorsement that can bring a contract, that can have the expertise that you, the entrepreneurs sometimes need as advisors. So our show is a magic connectors of dots. And at the end of the day, it's just to facilitate the access to capital for the entrepreneurs, but also giving people that before they never have the opportunity to invest, access to the same opportunities that only rich people have.
Well, I, I love that statement, the magic connector of dots. I have to remember that. But I think you bring up a fantastic point. We talk about the democratization of access to capital, to companies to grow and build, job create. But it's the other side as well, the access to wealth creation for individuals who didn't have that access before that's so powerful as well. Yes, absolutely, because access to capital for the entrepreneurs is fundamental to make their companies scale. Like there is no money, there is no company. So we all know that this is the blood of, uh, of our project. And you are an entrepreneur as well, so you know how important it is to have the backing that can help the company scale. But on the other hand, it's if we get to think of how people uh, can really make money and sometimes they dream of going to Las Vegas or like scratching little <laughs> cards to see okay well maybe I'll I'll make it I'll make it big but because investment was not accessible to the masses if you want to invest in a startup you have to be a wealthy uncle that has a nephew or a niece that is starting up to have visibility because the system the traditional venture capitalist ecosystem kept them very, very tight to, to their hearts and it was not open for regular people or smaller tickets. And by creating this platform, we allow these uh, people in the audience who have some money, perhaps they don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to be a traditional angel investor, to put their bets and to benefit. Like imagine like first investors of Uber, the one that invested $5,000, ended up with a check for $25 million when Uber IPO. So what this a beautiful thing, could right? happen. It's a beautiful story. Sabina, we could talk all day, but uh, before we close out, you have to extend the conversation. You're a founder of Unicoin. Where does that come from? How did that fit in? Oh my goodness, what a creation. We have two stories. One is the story of the dogs. We saw Shiba Inu. We have Dogecoin and we saw they are not cool enough it's a meme and a joke about the meme so what about we have a San Bernard my partner and and I have two gigantic beautiful San Bernards they, we can do it with San Bernards much better <laughs> and this is the not official story that uh, we we saw that we could create a coin that could address the issues of the traditional cryptocurrencies and we saw this as on one hand a way in which we can allow investors to, in, to have a vehicle in which when they said well I like this company and I like this other company but I don't have enough resources so I don't feel like I want to invest separately in one company or the other but I want to feel that I'm hedging my risk so there's it comes unicorns that this vehicle that is backed by real world assets including equity stakes of many companies, companies that go through the show ecosystem, companies that we are scouting and bringing on board and investing in, and also by real estate. Uh, we have over $1.4 billion in real estate assets that were acquired using uh, unicorns that were signed and uh, to uh, be part of our portfolio. So we are creating a next generation cryptocurrency that addresses the issues of the traditional volatility, lack of transparency, of the wild west of generation one crypto. And it helps people to invest easily because crypto is a huge democratizer of investment opportunities because it's easy. So people can invest in Unicoin and have the best of the world worlds, the best of the traditional financial system and the best of the blockchain technology. Well, absolutely fascinated, Silvina. Have to have you back again soon. There's so much to talk about and extend on. Welcome again today, the first of many conversations that I hope to have with you. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to be here and to the fear girl that I have inside of me. We, we can only say like, yes, it can be done. It has to take passion, it has to take determination, but of course it also has to take the knowledge and the certainty that we have everything inside of us to make things happen. What a beautiful way to close out. Thank you again, Sophia. Thank you.